Hi everyone and welcome to this video lecture on psychopharmacology basics. This video lecture follows on the heels of learning about neuroanatomy and neurophysiology and also how the brain develops across the lifespan. It's important to know that some of the concepts around psychotropic medication really follows the information about neurotransmitters and neurotransmission. And so that'll give you a good grounding to this week's uh, content. Some of the key terms that we're going to be exploring today include pharmacodynamics, pharmacokinetics, and we'll also learn about different types of uh, pharmacokinetics, such as absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. There are important concepts related to how a drug is, uh, impacts the system and how quickly or how long it takes for the drug to leave the system. And really what we're talking about here are drug half-lives. We'll also talk about steady state, which is connected with half-lives, because it's the amount of half-lives needed for the drug to have a therapeutic benefit or effect. Then we'll talk about neurotransmitters related to psychiatric medications. Indications, contraindications, that's when a drug is not indicated. In fact, it you know, would be harmful and side effects of drugs, and why those side effects occur, what's happening in the body. Then pregnancy categories for drugs, barriers to adherence, meaning uh, challenges for people to be taking these medications, and then strategies for effective consultation. So how to talk with clients about medication, how to talk with um, medical professionals about medication. We're going to begin uh, this uh, kind of review of this week's content and preparation for our in-class lecture by kind of returning to neurotransmitters, which we talked about during the anatomy and brain development uh, video lecture. You see here that we have glutamate, serotonin, norepinephrine, GABA, which is gamma aminobutyric acid, acetylcholine, and dopamine. These are very important uh, neurotransmitters, and many of these are implicated in medications that clients take for mental disorders. For example, let's look at the common classes of medication and which of these neurotransmitters they hit. For example, SSRIs or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors are primarily prescribed for depression, and I would also say anxiety. Um, in addition to conditions like OCD, and they're known to enhance 5-HT, which is serotonin. Uh, in comparison, you look at antipsychotics, they are known to reduce, ser uh, especially second generation, reduce serotonin and also reduce dopamine. So understanding the impact these drugs have on neurotransmitters and neurotransmission is helpful um, because it helps us make sense of why those neurotransmitters are important, what happens when you adjust and alter them. Here's an example of how a drug can alter neurotransmission. We see an example of aripiprazole, that's Abilify. Abilify is a second generation antipsychotic drug. You see here that Abilify is basically blocking the reception of dopamine uh, to the dendrite of the next neuron. And in doing so, the drug is reducing the amount of dopamine that is being transmitted. So in other words, it down-regulates the amount of dopamine. So by reducing dopamine, uh, the drug has notable benefits for people who take it. For example, um, people who experience hallucinations and, uh, and delusions often have an excess of dopamine. And so being able to control that has therapeutic benefits because it reduces hallucinations and delusions. This is a uh, example of reuptake. The process of reuptake is one in which neurotransmitters are reabsorbed by the original axon terminal button that released them into the synaptic cleft. When the neurotransmitter is not received by the receptor sites on the dendrite, it can be reabsorbed, and that's the process known as reuptake. You'll notice here that we have, again, on the right-hand side of the axon terminal button, there is a kind of blockage. There's an, it says SSRI blocking reabsorption of serotonin. So reuptake inhibitors 
block the reuptake that leads to more of the drug being or oh, sorry drug more uh, serotonin uh, being in the synapse that is therefore more likely to be eventually absorbed to the receptor site so in other words what we're doing is increasing the amount of serotonin that is being um, uh, that is that is being transmitted from one neuron to another by, by basically blocking the reuptake of it blocking the reabsorption of it into the the cell that's centered in the first place I'm going to focus in class about half-lives and understand how drugs work and how they work the way they do. You notice that this graphic has three drugs, drug A, B, and C, and we'll talk about why it is that some drugs uh, leave the system much faster than others and what that means uh, for the therapeutic effect of the drug. We'll talk about difference in, uh, in, in plasma concentration and half-life by different forms of administration, routes of administration, such as IV dosing, that's intravenous, versus IM dosing, that's intermuscular, versus PO dosing, which is by mouth. We'll also spend time talking about steady state. Steady state is the, the kind of uh, process by which a person reaches the therapeutic effect of the drug. It typically takes about five half-lives. And we'll talk about steady state and, and what this means in terms of how long it takes for a client to see notable benefits from taking a medication for psychiatric reasons. All right, that's an introduction to what we're going to be covering this week. And I will see you all in class and we'll explore this in much more detail.